Dr. Farlow, who, as probably most of you know, single-handedly probably got more women into ministry than anybody I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if he saw something, good luck, you weren't getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, as a 30-something who had a first grader and a kindergartner and a newly adopted baby, I had a call. And I sure didn't think that's what God had in mind, because I thought this didn't make sense. Plus, we had a new puppy dog. <laughs> and, uh, but that all changed. And um, so I came to you in, as an intern and was with you and interned with you for a full year and was invited to stay a second year in my senior year as an assistant to the pastor, some term as such. So I was two years with you, and I actually came back when Reverend Tinsley was here after the passing of Reverend Farlow. I was with you for about eight months. Mm -hmm. So it was Reverend, it was Reverend Tinsley and I who teamed up, you might recall, after that period. Um, and then, you know, life went on. I, I was in Vallejo starting a church, Imani Fellowship, some of you came when we, um, Asked you to come and sing up in Fairfield. I was there for 12 years. And then went to Brooklyn, New York, where I was for five years, passed it there, came back. I went back was at um, New Bridges Presbyterian Church in Hayward, uh, California. Uh, brought me back to California, back, back to California. And I'm currently a full-time transitional pastor in San Francisco at Noe Valley Ministry. So God hasn't said hang it up yet, but I, I imagine it's coming. <laughs> um, and as far as um, the saints that, I always say there, there are a number of churches that shaped me because I stand on the shoulders of many, many strong, amazing women, starting with this church. So just a, I can't remember all the names, but a few that really took me under their wings, Sister Bonnie Mackey, mm -hmm. Mother Minnie Smith, mm -hmm. um, Mother L.D. Houston, mm -hmm. um, and there are probably a few others, but I'll never remember, because I grew up Catholic. I've got all the way up through eighth grade. It wasn't just tiptoeing in. So for me, an immersion, Really, the cultural immersion and the spiritual immersion was a new thing for me. And I had to learn some stuff. And so I used to write all of my prayers out. I remember either Mother Matthew or somebody said, now just put that down, baby. <laughs> just go up there and pray. And, and I did. But it takes a church village to raise a pastor who represents Jesus Christ, but also takes, in this case, know who you are as a black woman going into a white denomination. Yeah. Yes. Gene used to always say, take your God, take your Jesus take with you. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you go. Wherever you go. <laughs> and he made sure to expose me to everything, including very uncomfortable times, that helped me be able to pastor in a place my first call was East Oakland. And I did okay there because of what I learned here. And so I want you to know that your mark on me continues. I am who I am <coughs> because you welcomed me and because you taught me and because you mentored me and because you supported and loved me even when I left. And I say that wherever I go. The other church is St. Andrews, which I started when I was a teenager, but certain communities, this one in particular, are foundational and one that you see today. And I hope you feel proud about it. You equipped me in a way that you could see me. the first, and she's the second. 
And as far as I know, nobody's come after the two of us. So, and God has sent both of us on journeys we could not have imagined. And that is in no small part because of who you are and the many people that have come along the way. And I just want to say thank you for that. My journey didn't start too far back. I joined the Presbyterian Church in San Francisco back in, I believe, 2008. And you heard this, just now heard the story about me telling about our, our parents on uh, New Year's Eve 2012. Me and my sisters were all born and raised in San Francisco. And after our parents passed, we said, maybe it's time to go. So we moved across the bay. I moved to Pittsburgh. My sister moved right up the street off of San Pedro. And she called me one day and asked me, she said, is there a church around here I can go to? And I said, yes, the church of truth is right down the street. It's close by. How I was the journey to Presbyterian Church was like when I was at uh, the other Presbyterian Church, we would always get together for the seventh mass for the yes. And we would always sing and, and get the heaven get together and have a great time. And I always remember Reverend Paul preaching. Because he wasn't always there to preach. <laughs> you know, but he just, it was just something about him. But when I told my sister about this church, she came. And then she invited me and my husband to come for Christmas, for the Christmas concert. And I was singing and everything. I was like, I was in the choir. And I, I just loved it. I just loved it. And I think I came back two or three times. And I forgot what Pastor Peach about, but I got up and stood up. And became a member of the Truth Presbyterian Church. I remember when I did my first sermon. Um, after I was after I was appointed uh, moderator for the Presbyterian Women, um, we had our first human trafficking awareness Sunday, and I preached, and that was my first sermon. We were um, as the people were exiting, and the king was there. Pastor's wife was there. And she walked up to me and told me, you gotta do something with her. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And uh, they had a CLP program starting. Pastor told me to think about it. I thought about it, I prayed about it. I said, okay. God, I don't know if you're telling me yes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. 16 month course. For the first six months I cried at <laughs> Pastor Jay, our crying in class. <laughs> it, was, it, it was something I, I wasn't expecting. And I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, I'm like, I can't. I can't. And everybody was telling me how good I was doing. So that was God here in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. From then on, I've been here. I've been preaching. I'm the moderator of the Presbyterian Women. I'm here whenever anyone needs me. They call on me. And it's just such a blessing to be in such a beautiful place with beautiful people who I knew at first, but now I consider family. Each and every one of you, I love you. Thank you for keeping me going. Thank you for being there. And thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. For those who don't know, Phyllis is no longer living in the Bay Area. So she's living in Southern California and still pastoring, connected to Sojourner from there. Amen. Amen. So I think I just really want to ask one more question, and that is what stays with you? Maybe that's kind of been answered a little bit in, in some cases. What about your time here stays with you, um, continues to inform your life, your ministry, your work? What is it? What stays with me? What stays with me? The word of God stays with me. The love of God stays with me. The protection of God that stays with me. The Holy 
Holy Spirit so clear. She stays with me. You know, steadiness, everything in my life is there with God, the Holy Spirit. And I couldn't do it without him. Oh, yes. I have shut down that not too long ago. I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to open my Bible. I didn't want to do nothing. I don't want to go to puppy depression. I know it was depression. God's been still there with me, even though I felt I wasn't with him. But I knew he was there. And that's what stayed with me. Thank you. 
ahead and raise for our <laughs> So we have uh, some presentations to make. And uh, oh, uh, before, before I go any further, I want to make sure that uh, I name the other people who I worked with to do both the worship service and what we're doing. Uh, three women. One of them, Sister Hannah Head, who powerfully read our okay. <laughs> co-author, the two of us collaborated in writing that statement, and uh, she read it so powerfully and wonderfully. So we certainly are grateful to Hannah. Uh, Beverly Smith Miller, and then Gloria Gideon, who was Gloria in the kitchen also. Double B. So uh, we have certificates also, and a lot of offering of these these beautiful uh, orchids, I believe. Yes. yes. Okay, got it right this time. So I'm going to read the certificate and then ask you. And we'll give you the plan, we'll take a picture. Okay. So this first one. Get out your camera, you know. It is a certificate of appreciation. The Reverend Carmen Mason Brown, in honor of her commitment and dedication as pastoral spiritual leader. We are grateful for her outstanding service and hereby recognize her work with this certification. This 10th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. Have a comment, please. So, this should say, <laughs> Certificate of Appreciation, Minister Phyllis Gibbons, in honor of her committed and commitment and dedication to pastoral spiritual, as a pastoral spiritual leader. We are grateful for her outstanding service and hereby recognize her work with this certificate on the 10th day of March in the year of our Lord, 
is in her throat. And you too, Pastor. I, I just want to say how my heart is just filled with the love and inspiration and all that you are, not just to me, but I know what you give to so many others. And I'm grateful that God created each of you as a designer original to give us the love and what we need from women of God and pastor as well. I just wanted to say thank you from my heart. And I continue to pray for you and be blessed by your presence. Thank you. Amen. 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 In your bulletin, you did receive an, an updated, more correct pastoral service timeline. It's two-sided. One side has just the women pastors who have served here, and on the other side, it has all the, all the people. Um, so please uh, carry that document with you, and let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the lives and ministries of these two women and the others who have served here at Sojourner Church and your church in general, God. Where would we be without them? We thank you, God, for gifting them for your service and then for them answering yes to your call, not fully knowing what all that meant or what all, where all that would lead, but trusting you. And because they trusted, because they had faith, because they followed and served. And that has benefited all of us, God, from generation to generation. Continue to use them in your own special way as instruments of your blessing that help to give us strength for the journey of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.